So when dealing with operations, guys, there's three, oops, I kind of forgot to check. Hello. Now oh, we're good. Um, so I kind of forgot to, I didn't forget to check. Um, there's a couple basic operations we're going to talk about. So we got to add, subtract, and multiply. All right, and let's just kind of talk about two functions in general. Let's talk about the square root of x, and let's say g of x is 1 over x. So the really the main thing, the main thing you guys need to understand with operations of functions, addition, subtraction, and multiplication, is that the domain restriction is preserved. All right. Um, so when you are adding, subtracting, or multiplying, algebraically that's going to be different, and you're going to have to apply those operations based on what they are. You know, if they're polynomials, you have to combine like terms and, and you know distributive property or whatever. Um, but the imp more important thing is like let's say these two equations. The reason why I chose these is because these both have domain restrictions. This is all positive numbers from 0 to infinity. And the domain restrictions here is negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. OK? Right? So the important thing is it doesn't matter if I'm adding these two functions, if I'm subtracting them, if I'm multiplying. We know that the answers to those are all going to be different. However, the domain of the product, the sum, the difference, is going to be the same. And because the domain restrictions are preserved, and also, when you're not paying attention, it is the intersection of those two domains. So let's graphically look at this domain to make sure that for those of you that were having trouble paying attention, we can understand this. If I was going to graph this on a number line, this domain looks like that, right? This domain is for all real numbers except for 0. Right? So it doesn't matter if I add, subtract, or multiply. Obviously, the answer is different. But the domain is going to be the same, which is the intersection of these two domains. So then we look at this graph of both domains, and we say, where do they intersect? Where are they both defined? Not for negative numbers, only this function is defined. Not at 0, only that function is defined. But you guys could agree that for all positive values, the function, both functions are defined. Correct? So it doesn't matter if I add or subtract or multiply them. The domain of that operation is going to be the intersection of my two restrictions, which in this case, is 0 to infinity. The next one is division. And division is also intersection, but it's important to understand that we are adding in a restriction. So for instance, if I gave you f of x equals 2x plus 1 and g of x equals x plus 2. Right? So you know, whatever. Random two equations. Now the important thing is when you do division, you are creating a new constraint. When I do f of g of x, what that means is I am now taking the f of x function and dividing it by the g of x function. And that's important because if we just look at these domain restrictions here, this is negative infinity to infinity. This one is negative infinity to infinity, all real numbers. So if I was to add, subtract, or multiply these, the intersection of all real numbers with all real numbers would just be all real numbers. But I'm not add, subtracting, or multiplying these. I am dividing them. And the key thing is I am putting a function in the denominator. So I am recreating a new restriction. And that new restriction is the function in the denominator, or the values, um, or sorry, the function, can in, the function in the denominator cannot equal 0. Or whatever values makes the function equal 0 are not in the domain. So again, that's where we come into. We have this restriction now where g of x cannot equal 0, right? And so they, they're basically what we, um, so if we have that. So in this case, if we were to plug them in, 2x plus 1 divided by x plus 2. So now you guys can see that, oh, even though x plus 2, the function by itself, is all real numbers, by using division, since I'm putting that in the denominator, I am adding the new restriction that x cannot equal negative 2, because negative 2 is the number, is the value, that makes my denominator equal to 0. right? So therefore, the domain here is going to be all real numbers except for negative 2. Now, it's also important to understand, what if my function was also a radical? Then it's also important to understand you've got to do the intersection of your two domains. You have to intersect the domain restriction of the numerator as well as the intersection, intersection of the domain restriction for the function being in the denominator. Does that make sense? No. So here, did that make sense, why the domain is like this? Well, if this function was the square root, 
or this function is the square root. I have just now added a new restriction to this function, right? You can only take the square root of positive numbers. So therefore, you'd have 2x plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 half if you do the math. So what that means is I also have a new function, a new restriction of negative 1 half comma infinity. So just like I did here, I found the intersection of the two domains. I would now have to find the intersection of these two domains. Okay. Do you want me to do that? Yes? yes? No? Yes. OK, why don't we do it? Graph it. So let's see, all the real numbers except for negative 2. So 0, boom, 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 boom. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 1. It's negative 1 half. So negative 1 half would be like here. Here's 0. So then we look at what values is the function then defined for? From negative 2 included to infinity. So that's what, what would be the domain. Again, I'm like creating another problem. Negative yeah, negative 1 half, sorry. Is that your, yes? So, um, so that's the, the, domain. the domain now for this radical function that I just created an extra problem on top of. If it wasn't the radical, then that would have just been the domain. But I introduced it, I did a second example. Yes? Because 0 can't be for n for x. Oh, okay. That's why. OK. We go with these two? All right, so the last operation, guys, is composition. And remember, guys, composition is basically just plugging one function into the other function. And the important thing to remember about composition is the function that you are plugging into the other function is preserved. It does, not it does not go away. So for instance, when I do f of g of x, mathematically, that is just saying plug the g of x function into the f of x function. So it would look something like this. And that simplifies to x, right? And then some people would say, oh, well, then the domain is all real numbers. But no, the domain is not all real numbers because the original function g of x that you plugged in before you simplified is restricted. And that domain restriction is preserved. It does not go away just because you algebraically simplified it. Okay? And my point is, if I was to ask you what is f of g of negative 1, rather than plugging negative 1 at the, at the end, if you plug negative 1 first, right? if you find g of negative 1 and then plug that into f, you can't evaluate in the real number system g of negative 1. That's undefined, correct? So you can't evaluate for g of negative 1. That's why the domain restriction, even though this is x, the domain restriction of this composition is still 0 to infinity. Question? Are there hammers? No? OK. However, let's look at this. So this would be undefined. Let's, let's have a little fun with this. Let's do g of f of x. So now you're going to plug f of x into g of x. So when you plug f of x into g of x, you get the square root of x squared. Right? Now this one's important. Is our, now this simplifies to the same thing of x. However, you look at the function that you plugged in. You plugged in f of x. We plugged f of x. What is the domain restriction of x squared? Is there any domain restriction? It's all real numbers. And think about that, guys. If you plug in any number, any positive or negative number, and then you square it, can you then take the square root of that number? Yes. So this way, the domain is all real numbers. But it doesn't work the other way, because the other way, you're taking the square root first. And we are restricted on what numbers we can take the square root of. right? You can square a number and then on square root it. But you can't square root a number and then try to square it for all numbers. Does that make sense? Yes. So one, order matters. And then two, the domain that you're plugging into the other function that restriction is preserved. Um, and then lastly, obviously, once you plug the function in, you know, look into that domain of the composition before you simplify. Okay? So always look into finding the domain not only of the input function, but then also of the composition as a whole before simplification. Okay? Question.
Yeah, but what I'm saying is, you're right. But the difference is, before symbol, like, the thing is, there's no domain restriction on x squared. That's all real numbers. So when you take all real numbers and square them, right, you can take the square root of any number that's squared. Any number that has been squared, positive or negative, you can take the square root of it. Because negative, two, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. You can take the square root of 9. Right? That doesn't work because, again, do this without simplifying this to x. If you try to plug in any real number in there, you are restricted to only positive numbers. You can't plug negative 1 into that formula, right? Can you plug negative 1 into this one? Yes. So that's why this one is all real numbers. That's why this one is restricted from 0 to infinity. So you use the restricted ones as both of them together instead of separate? Yes, as well as you do the restriction of also what is inputted in. What function is being plugged into the other function? Oh, so you, so you would just do the one of two of them. You have to look at two domains. You have to look at the domain of you have to look at the, the domain of the input function as well as the composition of both of them combined. All right, and that's what you're looking at to, that's what you're looking at the intersection of them. And just notice when you you know you both simplify, they, they both simplify to all real numbers. But since this one has that restriction of 0 to infinity, that's where that one intersects. And if I had more room board space, you could graph it and you could visually see how that works a little bit more. Okay. Any other questions? No?